Uh, I'm pleased to be with you today. Thank you to IDC for giving me the opportunity to present today. Uh, the topic of this presentation, yes, the main topic will be life insurance transfer, but first I'll take a quick look at uh, why a corporation should or should not subscribe to a life insurance policy. Um, then we will look at uh, look in detail some uh, corporate insurance structure. And finally, we will talk about the rules and effects surrounding uh, the different type of policy transfers. So yes, I'm a lawyer, but please keep in mind that the content of this presentation and my comments are not legal or tax advice. Uh, we always recommend that you rely on your client's independent professional, lawyer, uh, content, or tax specialist. Uh, they are the ones who have all the information to be able to really give legal and tax advice to your client. So uh, what is the purpose of uh, insurance for a corporation? First question. Uh, we all know a bit about that. Uh, pay tax at debt, as you probably know, when the tax shareholder dies, <clears throat> is deemed to sell his shares and he must pay tax at that time. So um, how is the estate is going to pay these tax? Without life insurance, uh, I would say that winding up the corporation is an option or selling the assets of the corporation. But is that really what we want? Uh, it's much easier to fund uh, the tax with life insurance. With the CDA created with life insurance, you can pay tax free dividend to the estate then the estate can pay tax and keep the corporation without having to liquidate it. Uh, to coverage of a key person uh, for a shareholder or uh, also for employees who are very important to the corporation. Beyond having to pay tax following the death of the shareholder, we must think of uh, the impact that a debt can have on the business of the corporation. Uh, maybe a sales drop or a loss of income or any other complications. So again, insurance can help uh, in case of the loss of an important person in the corporation. Three coverage of a shareholder agreement. Uh, when, there, when there is more than one shareholder in a corporation, uh, having a life insurance could be a good idea if you have a, a, a shareholder agreement. The fact that one of these shareholders dies, uh, may trigger problem for the continu continuation of the business. First, uh, you have the shareholder, the surviving shareholder, uh, probably he does not want to continue doing business with the estate of his former partner. Uh, so there, there are two problems here. You know, surviving shareholder wants to be able to buy the share of the deceased shareholder. Uh, and the deceased shareholder want to be sure that his estate will have enough money to support the same lifestyle. The accumulated value of the share is part of the shareholder's wealth. He wants to, to, to make sure that his <clears throat> former partner will be able to pay for these shares and uh, also make sure that the family will have enough money to continue their lives. Financing uh, the repurchase shares. Uh, in the context uh, example of a family business transfer, we usually use a state freeze. Uh, in this case, there is often a balance of free shares to be redeemed in time. Uh, the typical example is when a father uh, transfers his business to his son or his daughter. Uh, in the event of the father's, father's death, we want to make sure that the corporation can immediately redeem the, the father's free shares. This way, uh, <clears throat> the value of the shares can be divided between the, all the family estate without having to wait for the corporation to buy back the shares. On the other hand, uh, in the case of early death uh, of the son or the daughter, uh, the father wants to make sure that the corporation will be able to buy back his shares, even if there is no successor in the corporation to continue the business. Protection of uh, corporate loans, number five. Uh, this is common. The bank will request uh, that the commercial loan has to be secured by an insurance policy in case of that of the key persons, uh, such as the, the main shareholder. 
sex create wealth. Uh, we know that the internal rate of return of an insurance policy is good, so investing in a policy can create wealth. And seven, tax shelter for sale or savings. Uh, <clears throat> we know, uh, and you know, the, the growth uh, and the internal uh, return on policy is tax free, so that benefit would provide with what we call a uh, snowball effect. So no tax on, re on return, leaving more capital for growth. Uh, our clients should benefit as much as possible of this. And here are uh, the comparison between the, the benefit for individual, individually owned policy and uh, corporately owned policy. Uh, as you see, life insurance really gives a lot of benefit to the corporation. So you have wealth protection. We have discussed this up on that of shareholder, he has tax to pay, and the life insurance is a good way to protect the wealth. But this is also true for individuals who also want, uh, want to cover some needs they have in case of death. Uh, Tax-free accumulation, uh, the growth is tax-free. Uh, this is true for our product. This is also true for accumulated fund in the UL policy. This is the case for individual and for corporation. Maximization of the capital dividend account. Since the debt benefit is not taxable for individual, there's no need for CDA for individual, but for corporations, this is an important aspect of the insurance. Now, there are insurance products and strategy uh, to maximize the CDA and make the most of it. Lower of the tax premium. Uh, I don't mean that the premium are lower, lower for corporations. Here, um, the price is the same, in fact, but however, we, we, we won't go in detail in all of this, but you should know that the financial effort is lower if the corporation pays for the life insurance premium. It's easy to understand. The corporation has a lower tax rate than an, than an individual, uh, and it depends, in fact, of the type of income, but it's mostly the case. So if the rate is lower, there will be more money left after tax to pay the insurance premium. So that's the point here. Higher retirement income. Uh, I'm talking here about possibility to setting a strategy to generate retirement income. For example, insurance retirement strategy gives a very good result, uh, results with, uh, with corporate uh, insurance. And finally, uh, we are the corporate owned insurance are not subject to passive income rules. Uh, uh, investing through an insurance policy can be good for a corporation. Uh, life insurance policy are not subject to those rules. And uh, uh, passive income rules can be very penalizing for corporations that are eligible for a small business deduction. <clears throat> so, uh, yes, there uh, are many benefits for corporation, of, <clears throat> excuse me, for corporately owning life insurance policy, but there are also disadvantages. Uh, you have to take that into account as well. So, first, creditor protection, having a, la a large Cash value in an operating corporation can be uh, can represent a risk in the event of uh, financial difficulties, which is one of the reasons why it is often recommended to put the policy in a holding corporation when it's possible. The surrender value of the life insurance policy is an asset, and uh, the corporation must take that into account, uh, especially for valuation. So upon that, the value of the shares may be higher because of the cash value. So this will leave you with more tax to pay. And uh, for uh, capital gain exemption also, this is something we have to, to, to have a close, a close look. So if share of the corporation can be qualified for capital gain exemption, the cash value of a life insurance policy may be an issue. Uh, the capital gain exemption right now is, uh, is nine nine hundred thirteen thousand dollars of uh, of capital gain? So that will give you a uh, tax saving of about two hundred forty four thousand dollars. So that's a lot. But sometimes, you know, first first of all, you must qualify to this exemption, and sometimes that's not uh, that's the, 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 this tax savings are not uh, are not enough regarding the. the the size of the corporation, so you have to put that into account as well. Uh, Non-deductible premium, so means uh, that you pay premium with after-tax dollar. 
so less interesting if you could deduct the premium from the taxable uh, income. There is uh, some exception, but it's not a goal here to, to go to through those exceptions. Most of the time, premium are not tax deductible. Now I will talk about some example of corporate insurance structures and some of their consequences. The, the, the reason why I, I want to look at these structures is because they are often the starting point for asking for policy transfer. So before you consider a policy transfer, I think you should have ask yourself some question and make sure you understand why uh, you have this structure in front of you. Maybe it is for historical reasons. Uh, maybe it's because we didn't have a holding company before and now we have one. Or uh, maybe no one asked why the policy is structured that way. So, uh, and th there may be other reasons. Maybe the possibility of transferring was already looked at, but there are consequences and they were too important to make the transfer. Uh, maybe the current structure is not optimal. Uh, from an insurance point of view, but uh, it, maybe it's good for accounting practice. So I think that if you see a structure that doesn't seem to meet the need, you should first discuss this with the client and their professionals to understand why the insurance is structured in, the, in, the, in this way. After that, you could uh, determine the consequences and decide if you're going to recommend the transfer of ownership or uh, if you think it is it, it not worth it. So it, it really depends on all the situations. So uh, first uh, corporate structure I want to show you, this is most of the time the kind of structure that we recommend. Uh, if you have this kind of structure, personally, I think it's, it's a good way to, to, to structure your insurance. So in this case, the holding is the policy holder, the payer and the beneficiary of the, of the policy. Uh, there are some great benefits from this, this structure. There is no taxable benefit from the premium paid because the payer is the beneficiary. So uh, no need to, uh, to worry about that. There is no impact on the capital gains exemption most of the time. It's a, 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 all situation. You are selling the shares of the operating company at some point, not the shares of the holding company. So having the life insurance policy deal, they it's a, it's a good way to avoid any uh, any of this concern about the capital gain exemption. Transfer of ownership is unlikely, which means that again we are not used to sell the share of the holding corporations. We are selling the share of the operating corporation. So it is probably the good way to of your insurance, uh, save from operating corporation creditors. So if you have a uh, cash value, uh, even if you have a debt benefit paid to the operating, operating corporation, you are sure that the, the creditor of the, the operating will not have access to your policy. Some point of awareness, uh, accounting, uh, just to make sure that the holding have the money to pay for the premium. Uh, the main concern of the accountant is, is focusing, focusing on the operating corporation, not really on the holding corporation. So just to make sure that you have enough money in your holding corporation to pay the premium and the safe income issue. Uh, the safe income, uh, this is a tax uh, notional account, not exactly like the CD. In fact, this, this safe income, if you don't have enough safe income, it is hard to transfer money from, from the operating corporation to the holding. So uh, probably the premium will, won't be an issue regarding safe income, but if you are, if you want to make big deposit in the policy, transfer a large amount of money from the operating to the holding, you may have some issue regarding safe income. The accountant and the tax specialist will help you with that, but just keep in mind that there may be some reason why this is uh, this is an issue. Second a structure here, uh, policy holder is the operating, uh, is the, the operating is also payer and the beneficiary. Probably we, uh, we, we the, 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 the shareholder decided to take the insurance before having a holding corporation and now it's that way. So 
there is some benefit of structuring this the policy that way. Uh, premium are paid with business income, so which is good. Uh, simple for accounting. Again, the, the accountant is probably focused on the operating of company and uh, the surrender of value represent an asset in the financial statement, which can be good in some situation. You want to have this big liquid asset in your operating corporation when you go into to a bank and asking for a loan. But at some point, there is a problem regarding creditor risk here. Uh, you Sometimes you don't want to see this big asset. Uh, this is, there's a risk here for creditor protection. Uh, surrender value is not eligible asset for the capital gain exemption. So if, again, the capital gain exemption is a concern, uh, the, the cash value is there in this operating corporation and this asset is not eligible for the capital gain exemption. And transfer of ownership, we will see some example later. Uh, if you transfer the ownership of the policy to the holding, you will have some uh, uh, some tax to pay if the cash value is higher than the ACP. Uh, third one, uh, this is something happened. Sometimes people have some question regarding the fact that here the policyholder is the holding and is the pay the payer, and the operating is the beneficiary. Uh, there is no taxable benefit here because the holding is uh, hold uh, one hundred percent of the share. Of of the operating corporation. So no taxable benefit, no impact on capital gain exemption because the cash value will be in the holding, not in the operating. The transfer of ownership is unlikely because the holding is the policy holder. So if you are selling the share of the operating corporation, you just have to change the beneficiary and it's done. Uh, surrender value creditor from a safe, from, uh, from creditor of the uh, operating corporation. Uh, for sure, the holding is the owner of the, the, the cash value. Some point of awareness, uh, accounting, again, the same. Uh, debt benefit, not safe from creditor. When you pay the debt benefit, at this time, you say it's paid tax with the operating corporation, but the, the creditor of the operating corporation can have access to this debt benefit before you have time to pay the uh, the debt benefit through CDA to the audience. Uh, here, uh, no benefit for CDA. Before, uh, before 2017, there were some uh, benefits of this kind of structure, and that explains maybe why it is structured it this way. Uh, before, the, before 2017, if you, have, uh, if you had a, a debt benefit paid to the operating corporation, and the operating was not the policyholder, there was no ACB, so full CDA in each situation. So, but the law changed uh, in 2017, so you cannot, uh, there's no tax benefit for, for from this part uh, right now, since 2000, 2017. Uh, safe income issue, again, maybe if you have to transfer money from operating to the holding, uh, you may have some issue regarding the safe income. And last, uh, last structure, uh, again, we have a lot of questions regarding those kind of structure because the policyholder is the holding. So uh, first, there is no taxable benefit here because the payer uh, is the beneficiary of the, the, the policy. Uh, the main thing is I don't, I will not have to transfer the ownership of my policy if I'm selling the shares of my operating company. Uh, so that's one point. Uh, so it's easier this way. Uh, but there is some risk regarding uh, shoulder benefit in that regarding the cash value because the cash value is uh, is the property of the holding corporation and it is the operating uh, who puts money in the policy. So maybe you have some issue with uh, taxable benefit at some point, uh, not regarding the premium, but only regarding the cash value. So this is something you have to take into account. Uh, if you have a corporate reason to sell uh, your um, your policy that way, maybe you can avoid this, uh, this taxable 
benefit, but just take that into account. Uh, and if you have some reason, in fact, to to uh, to settle your policy that way, you should keep track of these reasons. So if you have a question from the CRA, you can explain why you, you put that uh, the structure that way. Uh, debt benefit not creditor protected. So again, if the debt benefit is paid to the operating corporation, the creditors of the operating may have access. They will have access, in fact, to the debt benefit. So maybe you don't want to, you want to avoid that. Uh, in fact, on the capital gain exemption and operating surrender value creditor protected, uh, uh, it, it is to be confirmed because it really depends on is the property of the cash value is really to the holding or can we uh, consider that the operating company is the or the uh, the owner of the cash bank so, so some on some situation that can be the case now i, I go over uh, the rules for transferring a life insurance policy so first uh, we must understand in fact what is really a transfer for tax purpose you should know that for tax purpose, a policy transfer creates a uh, disposition. Uh, an important consequence can result from this disposition. So, for example, the surrender of a policy result in a disposition. Most of the time, uh, it's partial disposition. Uh, so does uh, a policy loan. It's a disposition also. And uh, the change of a policy holder of a policy result in a uh, in the disposition as well. We will see in detail uh, later what the consequences are following a transfer of ownership. But what we need to remember here is that the simple fact of request to, requesting a change of policy order leads to a disposition which can trigger important tax consequences. And you know the insurance company will not necessarily warn you when you will ask for a change of policy order. However, somewhere in February of the following year, uh, your client may receive a bad surprise, uh, a tax slip. This is how he, he may learn that he has to pay tax following the change of policy order made a few months ago. So we don't want this to happen. Uh, important point before going through uh, the general rule, uh, a life insurance policy is not eligible for tax-free uh, rollover. Uh, this is not an asset eligible for, for that. Uh, in, in, uh, and this position of an interest in life policy will may trigger a taxable gain. So, and this is not a capital gain, okay? Make that clear. This is taxable gain. This is income, 100% uh, taxable. Here you have the subsection of the law for the general rule. I'm not going through uh, through all that for sure, just to make you the re just to give you the reference. What you need to know is that the general rule applies quite rarely. Uh, the general rule applies when a policyholder sells a policy to an arms length person, a person with who is not related. So it is something that exists, but I would say that it's not very common. So, so if in that case, if you have a transaction without unrelated person, the owner is taxed uh, on an amount equal to the proceed of disposition uh, he received. So if he is taxed on the money he received for the acquisition, acquisition of the, the life insurance policy, less minus the ACB. So the proceed of disposition is really the amount that he was paid for the life insurance policy. And the ACB, you, you know about the ACB, the insurance company will give you uh, this number. So the owner must pay tax on this amount. So the difference between the, uh, the proceeds of disposition with the ACB, and it is income, 100% taxable income. Again, not capital gain. Uh, uh, and for for new for the new owner, the amount paid uh, for the the policy will be his new ACB. So that's the general rule. But again, general does not mean frequent rule. As you may guess, there are there are exceptions to this rule. So 
Uh, you have inter vivo transfer to spouse, transfer spouse at death, transfer to policies older still or child or grandchild. Uh, there are some requirements for, uh, for those three exceptions. And the fourth one is the disposition at the non arm's length and similar cases. Uh, the purpose of the presentation is not to go through the, all these exceptions. Uh, I, I will say that the first three are fairly easy and, and common. Uh, but however, the disposition at non arms land and similar cases is more complex. And this, this is the exception that we will focus on. So here you have the uh, important parts of the subsection that talks about the specific rule. You will see that this rule is, is applied much more frequently than the general rule. So I read, uh, if an interest of a policyholder in a life insurance policy is disposed of by way of gift, by distribution from a corporation or any matter, whatever, to any person without whom the policy policyholder was not dealing at arm's length, then there are consequences, and we are going to talk about these consequences. But first, uh, we can see that this subsection is quite extensive and includes many situations. So uh, we're talking about gift. So gift is uh, when you transfer the ownership without any consideration. Uh, we're talking about distribution. So uh, when a company pays a dividend in kind, and this dividend is uh, a life insurance policy, and we're talking also about any other transfer in any way between non arms lands persons. So what we mean by non arms not dealing at arm's length, in a few words, uh, for individual, it's really simple, uh, connected by blood, relationship, a marriage, common law partnership, or adoption. So brother, uh, father, sister, uh, uncle, uh, so this is pretty common, but for a uh, corporation, maybe uh, first point, it's all about control. Uh, the, 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 part, the, the first part, in fact, it's controlled by voting share. So if person controls the corporation, uh, if a corporation control uh, another one, if two corporation are controlled, by the same person or if they are controlled by a related person. So this is regarding voting share, but, but also there are some questions of fact. Uh, so it is possible that you are not um, at arm's length without any voting, voting share. For example, a former major shoulder who no longer has voting shares, but uh, maybe he has so much freezing shares that he controls the company in some way. So uh, I, I would say that in unclear situation, it can be a good idea to, some, to do some check with the client's legal advisor. They will know about the, uh, the fact of control. When the specific rule apply, the policyholder is deemed to become entitled to receive a proceeds of disposition equal to an amount which is the greater of the cash value, the fair market value of any consideration paid for the full policy, and the ACB. And this is regardless of the policy fair market value. It's really fair market value of any consideration paid. So if you transfer the ownership of, the pol of a policy and you receive a car, and the value of a car in exchange, and, and the value of the car is like $10,000, we will take to account in this calculation, $10,000. So it's not related to the fair market value of the policy. So what are the impacts uh, of, of this transfer for the policy holder or the seller? Uh, is deemed disposition uh, will be this amount. So the greater of cash value, fair market value of the consideration or the ACB, and you do this, this calculation deemed disposition I think proceeds of disposition less the ACB would give you a 100% taxable gain. And for the beneficiary of the transfer, the buyer, the deemed proceeds of disposition will be equal to his uh, for new, uh, will be uh, new uh, ACB uh, for him. So uh, the ACB will be different if 
uh, if it pays an amount different than DACB for the, the life insurance policy. A few words uh, on the fair market value. Uh, according to CRA, uh, life insurance policy must be valued according to valuation principle, uh, practices. So there's nothing so special about life insurance policy valuation except for some some points. So like like the health of the insurer, uh, is life expectancy. So the insurer the insured situation is really important. It's all uh, it's all a question of fact, and it's all depending on the on the circumstance of all, all cases, of each cases. Uh, the CRA also mentioned for clarification that the value of the policy may be greater than the surrender value. And I would say most of the time it is. Uh, but the important thing here to remember is that it is always recommended to use an independent actuary uh, who does evaluation to determine this the fair market value of your life insurance policy? Uh, insurance company can't help you with the fair market value of the policy. They they issue themselves, and uh, there is a conflict of interest. And uh, and after after that, you know, insurance company they they don't have this kind of expertise. We have a lot of actuaries, but they are not specialized in this kind of field. You have to rely on an independent actuary. Uh, here are some examples of factors that can influence the fair market value of a policy. It, this is not exhaustive and there's not necessarily a specific order. It really depends on uh, the situation. So the cash surrender value of the policy is sure and uh, something you have to look at. The face amount, the insured debt, and life expectancy, replacement cost, conversion privileges, uh, guaranteed value. If you have a life insurance policy with a, a fund with a guaranteed value, it's really interesting. So we can uh, we can give you a higher fair market value. Uh, the amount of policy loan available again, and other kind of policies such as new and you have here some uh, so so these are some some in some uh, some clue of uh, high fair market value. So uh, it can it can't replace the work of an independent actuary, but it can give you uh, some information and some uh, some some clues about high fair market value. So if you have a term or a permanent. The, fact, the permanent probably will have higher value than a term. The level cost will probably have a higher value than a higher cost. Uh, the year of issue, so the age of the policy, the health change of the insured, the economic environment, the guaranteed uh, of insurability, uh, conversion option, and all guaranteed riders will give you some clues about that. The fact that you may have a high uh, high fair market value for, for your policy. So now we will go through examples of transfer of ownership with a specific rule. So here we have a situation where a shareholder wants to uh, transfer the ownership of a policy uh, he personally owned to his corporation. So why would I want to make this transfer? So maybe the shareholder wants to pay the premium with corporate money. Uh, maybe maybe you want to cover a shelter agreement with an existing policy. Uh, here you see no particular tax benefits since 2016, because before that we had a good planning, and you, you, with this planning you you could transfer the, the ownership of your policy uh, to your corporation, and that and you have big tax saving doing so. But since 2016, uh, you cannot have this tax saving with the, this kind of transaction. So that explained why we, did, we are, were used to do this kind of transaction before 2017, but now since 2016, uh, there's no tax liability. So maybe other reason why you could transfer the ownership, but not for tax purposes. Um, so for the policyholder, uh, the dean dispose is deemed to dispose of the, his uh, policy. 
and the printing proceeds of this position will be equal to the higher amount of between the surrender value, the uh, accumulate the ACB, and the, uh, the the fair market value of the consideration. And for him, the disposition this ACB will leave them with taxable uh, gain. And again, this is not capital gain. This is uh, this is income, so one good person taxable. For the beneficiary of the transfer, in this case, for the corporation operating or holding, it's the same. Uh, ACB or the new ACB will be equal to the proceeds of this position. And all this transaction is treated regardless of the policy uh, fair market value. This is important. Before seven, 2017, that was the main issue having uh, determine the fair market value and then do the transaction at the fair market value to have tax saving, but it's no longer uh, uh, a good planning to do. So, uh, so here's the example. So uh, we have the ACB, the policy features, the ACB is 50,000, the cash value is 125, and the fair market it is two is two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So, and we will see the consequences for for uh, example. So, without any consideration paid by the the corporation to the shareholder, uh, with a consideration equal to the ACB, to the cash value or to the fair market value, and here are the results. So, if so, without any consideration, the shareholder is deemed to dispose uh, of his policy to. One hundred uh, four, and his proceed of disposition is <clears throat> is deemed to be one hundred twenty five thousand dollar less his ACB of fifty thousand dollar that will leave him with a policy gain of seventy five thousand dollar. So the corporation pay nothing without any consideration. There is no taxable benefit because uh, the corporation is not the shoulder of of the shoulder. You understand the way it is. Where the transaction is. The shareholder who transferred to the corporation is policy. Uh, the new ACB for the corporation is one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. If the corporation paid for the for the policy, so in first case, the second row, uh, if the corporation pay fifty thousand dollars, the deemed proceed of disposition of for the shareholder is still one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars because it's the greater of three amounts. So greater of cash value ACBR consideration. Here the consideration is fifty thousand. The ACB is fifty thousand, and the cash value is one hundred twenty-five. So for the shareholder, the deemed product of this the deemed proceeds of this position is one hundred twenty-five thousand dollar. Still have to pay tax on seventy-five thousand uh, dollar. If the corporation pay the the, an amount go to the cash value, so one hundred twenty-five thousand dollar in third row. So same consequences for the shareholder, but he has one hundred twenty-five dollar you know, in cash. So that's a good news for him. But the corporation has to pay that amount, and the ACB will be uh, one hundred twenty-five dollar. And uh, last scenario, uh, if the corporation pay the fair market value of the of the, the, the insurance, then the thing pro proceeds of disposition for the shareholder will be two hundred fifty thousand dollar, which will that will leave him with two hundred thousand dollar of taxable income. So, not a good situation. The ACB will be higher for the corporation with uh, with this uh, last uh, scenario. So, probably the best scenario scenario in this case is. Uh, the corporation probably should pay a, an amount around uh, equal or or something close to the the cash under value to uh, to to make sure that the, the, the shareholder will have enough money to pay his tax and can keep the rest for himself. Here you have an, uh, another uh, another way to uh, to see it. In fact, if you want to transfer the ownership of a corp of an insurance from a corporation to a shareholder. Why would I want to make this transfer? Maybe I'm selling the share of my corporation and I want to keep the insurance. Uh, maybe I'm winding up the corporation or maybe cash value is an issue because I want to take uh, my uh, capital gain exemption. So uh, 
or maybe I, I have credit protection problems. So I want to transfer the ownership from the corporation to the shareholder. Uh, in this case, the, the treatment, would, the, the impact would be that the corporation is deemed to dispose of the insurance and uh, the corporation will have, to, will have to, pay, to pay tax on the difference between the deemed proceeds of disposition less the ACB. So, and this deemed proceeds of disposition will be equal to the higher of the cash value, the ACB or the consideration paid by the shareholder. And for the shareholder, the new ACB will be equal to this deemed proceeds of disposition. And uh, there may be a taxable benefit if the consideration paid by the shareholder is uh, smaller than the fair market value of the life insurance policy. So this is shareholder benefit, taxable benefit uh, if your fair market value is, is higher than, than your consideration paid by the shareholder. So you must determine the fair market value of the policy in this situation. So, and here again, you have the example with uh, policy features of ACB 100,000, cash value of 1 million, fair market value of 1.5 million, and uh, assumption without consideration with uh, consideration equal to ACB cash value or fair market value. And again, here you have the results. So without consideration, if the shoulder paid nothing for this life insurance policy, the corporation will have tax to pay. Uh, and the uh, the proceeds of disposition will be equal to the cash value, in this case, $1 million, less the ACB that will live a uh, policy gain of $900,000 for the corporation. For the shareholder, he paid nothing, but he has taxable benefit equal to the fair market value of the policy, so $1.5 million. His new ACB would be $1.5 million as well. So probably in this case, this is one of the best scenario because uh, it, it's not a good news. You, you have a taxable benefit of 1.5 million, but the, the value of this policy is 1.5 million. So probably it's fair, uh, but the taxable benefit probably will cost you less, uh, less after all, because you pay nothing uh, for the policy. If the transfer is, you made the transfer with uh, proceed of disposition if uh, for consideration, excuse me, equal to $100,000, same consequence for the, the corporation policy gain $900,000. The shareholder in this case paid $100,000 and has a taxable benefit of 1.4 million. So that's not, a, that's not a big deal. I don't think it's, it's a good situation. Most of the time, at least the corporation will want the shareholder to pay $1 million which is equal up to the cash value of the policy. Uh, so for the corporation, policy gain of $900,000, but uh, 1 million of cash. Uh, so the uh, shoulder has to pay 1 million of cash uh, for the policy, but he still has a taxable benefit of $500,000. Uh, so this is a kind of situation we're used to see. Uh, Sometimes the transaction, you can do the transaction at fair market value. So shoulder will pay 1.5, but it's not, this is not really a, a good deal for the corporation because then the corporation will have, will have to pay more tax on the policy gain and the cost of the insurance 1.5 from the shoulder. And that, that's a lot of money for him. But you know, that's like a real cost, but how can you finance 1.5 million you have to, to, to earn like $3 million to finance a $1.5 million payment. So this is a lot of work. In this case, you have a transfer. We have a transfer between an operating corporation to a holding corporation. Uh, again, why would I, I, I would do this, uh, this transfer? Uh, probably sell, uh, we, we want to sell the shares of the operating corporation. Uh, maybe there is a reorganization. We want to wind up uh, uh, the operating corporation. Maybe also an issue with the capital gain exemption uh, from the cash value because the cash value is growing. Uh, 
maybe it's just a simple evolution of the corporate situation. You didn't have a holding before, now you have one. So you want to make the transfer. So in this case, with most of this kind of transaction, we will do the transfer by dividend, dividend in kind. So uh, when you have a dividend in kind, the operating transfer, the life insurance policy, the holding uh, via a dividend, uh, and uh, the amount of this dividend should be equal to the fair market value. And in this case, um, you must determine the fair market value of the policy to avoid any taxable uh, benefit to the uh, owning corporation. So for the operating corporation, if you have a dividend, dividend in kind, the amount of the dividend is equal to the cash value. And so difference between cash value and ACV is 100% taxable. And for the holding corporation, this is this new ACV. Uh, but the ACV uh, will be equal to uh, to the firm, excuse me. The, tax, the holding corporation may have a taxable benefit and this taxable benefit is the difference between the firm market value and the, uh, the, dean, uh, the dean dividend. The dividend in kind and the ACB will equal the amount of this dividend plus the taxable benefit. So probably equal to the share market. Here again an example uh, you may you may proceed by dividend in kind or uh, just by regular transfer and in this situation the operating corporation will have policy gain of nine hundred thousand dollars in all most of the situation. But uh, for the holding, the situation will be uh, will be different, depend on the amount the the, the holding is paid. So here you have the number there. And last situation that I want to go through is uh, when an operating corporation wants to transfer the ownership to another operating. Uh, uh, it it could be to holding or one operating and one holding, no difference difference between sisters cooperation. So uh, why would I do this transfer? Maybe uh, there's a sale of the shell of one of the corporation. Maybe uh, there's no use for the operating corporation number one and I want to keep the policy and maybe the transfer to the shareholder to the shareholder is too expensive. So maybe I could transfer to a, a sister corporation. Uh, Maybe it's just an evolution of the corporation. So it depends on the reason why, but uh, you can make this transfer. And in this case, uh, there is a big disposition again from the operating corporation. Uh, number one in this case. So again, the deemed product, the deemed proceeds of disposition will be equal to the higher between the surrender value, the ACB, and uh, the consideration paid. Uh, and that will leave a taxable gain again, uh, gain again. Uh, and for the beneficiary of the transfer, in this case, operating number two, the ACB will be equal to this uh, D proceed at disposition. So again, same example, policy feature 100, 1 million, 1.5, and without consideration, with the consideration of 100,000, 1 million or 1.5. Then you have here uh, the results. So without any consideration, uh, so operating number two pays zero. The disposition, proceed of disposition, one million, ACB 100, policy gain $900,000. In this case, operating number two paid zero and here probably no taxable benefit, probably because operating two is not a shareholder of operating one, but there's a star here because if this transaction is made only for the purpose of avoiding a taxable benefit and there is a taxable, uh, and there is, uh, and the shareholder is the, 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 is the one who benefits from this transfer at the end of the day, maybe you could have a taxable benefit to the shareholder if you have a sole shareholder for the two corporations. So it's just taking that into account. Most of the time, it's not a problem, but just to make sure that we don't have any issue there with, uh, with the taxable benefit. Uh, and the other situation, you have the number. So probably in this situation, paying zero would be a good uh, 
a good idea if you don't have any taxable benefit because the cost of the transaction will be cheaper uh, in that way. So a quick, uh, th quick uh, key takeaways. Uh, change of ownership results in the disposition of a life insurance policy for tax purpose. Uh, the cash value, if your cash value is higher than the ACB, you may you will have taxable income uh, to pay. And this taxable income is taxable at 100 percent So this is not a capital gain. Uh, transfer to a shoulder. It is recommended to determine the fair market value of the policy uh, by an independent actuary, I would, I would add. Uh, so transfer to a shoulder. The shoulder can be another corporation it can be uh, an individual but uh, both it, it it's the same for, for both no tax slip or issue regarding shoulder taxable benefit and that's a problem again your client uh he has to pay for uh the valuation of the policy and after that you you will tell him that he must pay tax on the shoulder taxable benefit but you don't have any tax slip to explain to him that he has tax to pay. So not an easy one, but it's how it works. But if someone, a CRA, see this transaction and the, your client didn't pay uh, tax for this taxable benefit, he, he, he will probably have a lot of problem, uh, penalties and uh, an interest to pay on this taxable benefit. And you're not sure at this point, at this point uh, you don't want to CRA to determine the value of your life insurance policy. You better to contract with an independent actuary and ask them to, uh, to, to give you the correct value and not ask this question to the CRA. You want to avoid that trust in this. And the fair market value should be determined by an, an independent actuary. Again, don't ask the question to your life insurance company. They don't have the, this information. Uh, in the event of a transfer, uh, you should consider uh, paying a minimum amount, uh, probably equal, equal to the greater of the ACB or the cash value. It depends on the situation, but most of the situation that when you transact at zero dollar, uh, you're missing something because it is not the best financial way to to, uh, to take uh, to, to to make this uh, transfer happen. So uh, so just go through the numbers and make your calculation and make you sure that the consideration paid for life insurance policy is the best for your clients. So that's it for me. I hope uh, you enjoyed this presentation and uh, I hope to uh, to uh, answer your question. If you have any other question, please feel free to, to send your question and I will be happy to answer that. Thank you very much.